In a new book called The Kennedys, America's Emerald Kings, investigative journalist Thomas Mayer takes a look at this family's Irish Catholic heritage and how it shapes their decisions. And Thomas Mayer, good morning to you. Thank you for having me. It's a thick book, it's a long book, and you made revelations, and many would think, what else is there left to uncover? You approach this in a different way. Explain. Yeah, very much so. Um, you know, people look at the Kennedys as a Camelot royalty story, but in many ways, it's the story of the Irish in America, the story of immigrants in America. We close tonight with an unprecedented insight into the hidden feelings and the private agony of the late First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy. Forty years after the assassination of John F. Kennedy, the world got a look today at some letters written by his widow. And it looks like the father was a pack rat. He saved everything. <laughs> he sure did. Journalist Thomas Mayer first wrote about the letters in the diary in a new book on the Kennedys. I remember her as a beautiful, courageous woman behind this black veil. These papers, these letters, this exchange between Jackie Kennedy and the priest really show the, the uh, private side. If you share your deepest feelings with a spiritual advisor, should they ever share them with anyone else? We ask because nearly 40 years ago, after the assassination of President John Kennedy, his widow, Jacqueline Kennedy, turned to a family priest for comfort and advice. What she told him is shocking. It is also part of a new book. The strength and courage that she showed to the world then was apparently not all that was in her heart. I think in many ways these papers are a window into the soul of Jackie Kennedy and exactly what she was thinking and how she was trying to come to grips with this tragedy. Thomas Mayer was researching material for his book on the Irish Catholic heritage of the Kennedy family, the Kennedys, America's Emerald Kings, when a family representative referred him to a priest who had counseled family members following the assassination. The priest was Father Richard McSorley. Very shortly into my conversation with Father McSorley, he also indicated that he had counseled Jackie Kennedy after the assassination. And it was very clear that it was a very extraordinary chapter in American history, uh, the exchange between this priest and the bereaved First Lady. President John F. Kennedy was assassinated almost 40 years ago, but time has done little to reduce the public's fascination with him and the Kennedy family. And now a new book called The Kennedys, America's Emerald Kings, examines the family's immigrant roots and their strong ties to the Catholic Church. And it was written by Thomas Mayer. It's gotten wonderful reviews. Congratulations Thank on you the very book. Much. It's interesting because the perspective you approach the Kennedys with is not the Camelot American political royalty perspective. You look at them as Irish immigrants and how that affected uh, the five generations of Kennedys. Why that approach? Well, I, I think it's a much more accurate approach. I think that the Kennedys, in many ways, reflect the story of America, the story of immigrants coming to this country, trying to achieve. Uh, John F. Kennedy's election as president fundamentally meant a barrier was broken to the, to, uh, the White House. Uh, and in many ways, they've opened up the door for this new wave of immigrants in this country. So I, I think in many ways, it's a much more accurate reflection of what the Kennedy story means. Well, it's very interesting as, as we look at a, a picture of the Kennedy family there and that you got cooperation from many family members. Everything was on the record. Mm -hmm. And yet you come up with some blockbuster revelations. Mm -hmm. in the A new book about the Kennedys recaptures some of the grief, shock, and even the despair caused by the killing. The Kennedys, America's Emerald Kings, also contain some surprising revelations. Polizan talked with the author, Thomas Mayer. The Kennedys, the CIA, and the Vatican. Connect the dots for us tonight. In many ways, it's the, uh, the big secret that the Kennedys never let known. It's the uh, relationship between the Kennedys and the Vatican particularly Joe Kennedy, the patriarch of the, of the family, and that went on for about 30 years. What was the most revealing example of, of one of the secret dealings that, that you confirmed took place between the Vatican, the Kennedys, and the CIA? Sure. Well, the, there's a number of different letters, but the one that really caught my eye was a letter that Joe Kennedy writes from Florida to, to the right-hand man, Galeazzi, the right-hand man of the Pope, Count Galeazzi, in Rome. And basically he says, uh, it's 1958, and he says, uh, 
I just got a, 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 a visit, I've just had a visit from Alan Dulles, who was then the CIA director. And he thinks that Jack, my boy, Jack, is gonna be the next president of the United States. And he's very interested in, in helping us out or you know, being interested in this. And uh, what Joe Kennedy does is offer to be a liaison between the CIA and the Vatican. Had that type of letter been known by somebody like Richard Nixon, uh, Jack Kennedy's opponent in 1960. John Kennedy never would have become president. Exactly. Anniversary of the assassination of President John F. Kennedy last weekend, and with that milestone comes a new book examining the foundation of the Kennedy clan, its Irish Catholic roots. And joining me today is the author of that book. It is called The Kennedys, America's Emerald Kings, and welcome to Thomas Mayer. It's very much a pleasure to have you here. Thanks also for Also a Newsday reporter, and I understand this took you four years to put together. Lots of research went into it, and the book really delves into the history of the family. Tell about your trip to Ireland. Yeah, well, we had a great time. This is about three years ago and um, I, I really think to understand the Kennedys in America one of the things that you have to understand is what happened to the Kennedys in Ireland so the first three or four chapters of the book tells the story of of the famine of the backdrop of of what was going on for the Kennedys one of the big surprises is that the Kennedys in Ireland were members of the old IRA part of the whole move for independence against Great Britain so yeah. to understand that feeling it, it, it very much infused itself in the Kennedys here in America I Jack Kennedy when he becomes president of the United States, he insists on coming back. A few months before he gets killed, he goes to Ireland. In fact, President Kennedy described it as the best time of his presidency. Hmm, you can imagine. I mean, he was heralded as such the Emerald Isle <laughs> sure King was. when he returned there. To appear, joining me is Thomas Mayer, an investigative reporter for New York Newsday and the author of The Kennedys, America's Emerald Kings. Thanks a lot for coming on the program. We appreciate it. So was Thank it you, tough to me. convince the... Was it tough to convince the Shrivers to appear? I don't think it was because I think one of the major themes of the Kennedy story is of family. And uh, in many ways, uh, some of the issues that Arnold stands for uh, are the type of issues that the Kennedys have embraced, particularly immigration. Arnold is an immigrant to this country. He's in many ways an American story, a story of, of an immigrant come to this country who made good. And in many ways, that's the essence of the Kennedy story. Do you think that Sergeant Shriver, a vice presidential candidate uh, with George McGovern back in the 1970s, had any concerns, any reservations about standing up there with a Republican? I'm sure he did. I think the, uh, both Eunice Shriver and Sergeant Shriver, who are some of the most unique members of the Kennedy family, are also among the most liberal. So I'm sure they had some political differences. But when it comes down to crunch time, uh, the family is king in the, in the Kennedy family. And also bear in mind, the Kennedys come out of the immigrant democratic, uh, traditional part of the Democratic Party. So I think some of the issues, uh, the way that Arnold has framed it, is somewhat in tune with the, where the Kennedys came from. new book, Dr. Spock in American Life, deals with the difficulties he had in living up to his own expectations of parenting. Thomas Mayer wrote the biography, and Mary Morgan is Dr. Spock's widow. Good morning, and welcome to both of you. Thank you very much. Let, I think the, the important message is not whether or not he could take his advice or not, but that to keep on trying as a parent. I mean, we all have our, our foibles and our difficulties as parents, but the important message, I think, of his life, the moral that he was trying to impart, I think, to me as a young man, was that the importance is to keep on trying, the nobility in parenting is to try. When, when, you, when you started to deal with the aspect of his life where Mary comes into the picture, I mean, you have to know that there were three strong women in his life, his oh, mother, his first wife, and then <laughs> Mary. At the risk of embarrassing you, what did their relationship mean to Dr. Spock? Well, Ben's first marriage to Jane was a great, uh, was a great love affair, followed by the tragedy of alcoholism and such. Ben changed in the 60s, and there's a friend of Ben's who said to me that Mary represented the way in which the 60s changed Ben Spock. Um, he had become, to some degree, a new a new person. And Mary loved him for the man that he had become. So theirs is very much a love story. And in, it, in many ways, my book is a love story followed by a tragedy f uh, ending in a love story. I like the way you describe it, a love story followed by tragedy and then followed by another love story. Mary, Tom, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. But first, this is Today on NBC.